Hi everyone, I'm Tuxfu. Welcome to my series on taking back control of your computing. Your freedom and privacy on the internet and in computing in general. So today we're going to explore the Fediverse. So when people talk about the Fediverse, they're usually referring to federated social networks that use the open source federated activity pub protocol. A federated protocol allows different servers to communicate with each other. A good example of this is the email protocol SMTP. So if Bob's over here on Gmail and I'm over here on Libramail, you can still email each other. Another example is one I brought up in my previous video on instant messaging when I talked about Riot. Riot uses a different federated protocol called Matrix. So people on different Riot servers can still chat with each other. There are many different social networks that use the ActivityPub protocol, such as Mastodon, Friendica, PixelFed, and Peertube. Now, the great thing about ActivityPub is all these can still communicate with each other. So Mastodon is kind of like Twitter, and PixelFed is kind of like Instagram. Now, let's say there's a cool artist on PixelFed, but I'm on Mastodon. I can still follow that cool artist, and all their new art will appear on my Mastodon feed so I can still follow them and get all their latest artwork. Each server on the Fediverse is called a node. A great website to go to if you're looking for a node to join is the federation.info. Not every node is listed on this website because it's opt-in so it's up to the server administrator's discretion whether they want to opt into this or not. This website is also a good place to get some metrics. Of course being opt-in you take the metrics with a grain of salt. They won't be 100% accurate. If we scroll down here to projects or we'll click here on the left on projects we can see various projects that use um, federated protocols. Most of them are using ActivityPub or some of them like WordPress here will have plugins which integrate Fediverse features into them, such as maybe comments for your WordPress blogs. You could integrate Fediverse single sign-on, maybe. So as you see, Mastodon by far is the most popular with millions of users. Mastodon's a Twitter alternative, Friendica being the Facebook alternative, PixelFed being the Instagram alternative. Now it doesn't look like PixelFed has a lot of uh, users, but don't forget Mastodon users can follow PixelFed users. And not everyone's a photographer or artist, so their followers don't need a PixelFed account. So if you're looking for a Mastodon node, we'll click here on projects under Mastodon and the nodes will be filtered with only Mastodon nodes. So if you're looking for a Mastodon node, we'll click here on projects under Mastodon, and the nodes will be filtered with only... Wait, what? Projects under Mastodon, and the nodes will be filtered with only... Faulted? Filtered? Filtered? Okay, from time to time this site fails to click metrics. If this happens, there are other sites we can get nodes information on, such as instances.social. So here we can go list, advanced, then we can say show me a hundred. And we can list it by the amount of users. And there are other filters you can do as well over here on the left. Another thing to consider when looking for a node or instance or shard, whatever you want to call it, to sign up for is whether the registrations are actually open. Sometimes they need to close the registrations, sometimes due to the cost of running the server. They can't handle any more users, so they close it. So most Mastodon nodes try to get their server costs by asking for donations from their users. Another thing nodes can do is think up extra additional services they can charge for, such as e providing an email service. Another thing to consider when looking for a node to join 
is the uptime. It's no good having join a server that's only up 50% of the time. Now sometimes an instance will block another instance. So let's look at mastodon.social as an example. On uh, GitHub here they've got a list of instances they block and there's different types of blocks. So there's a media block which means no pictures or media from that instance will be shown on mastodon.social. And a sandbox means you can still follow people from the blocked instance, but posts from those blocked instance won't show up in public feeds. And a suspension is a complete block. You can't, act, you can't communicate with these blocked servers. Okay, this is Mastodon. Posts are called toots. There's a 500 word limit. You can attach media such as photos and videos and music. Reposts, uh, boosts. And you can pin a post to your feed as well. So it'll be the first post someone sees if they search for you. And this search tab here allows you to search for people on Mastodon. So let's go Lunduk, for example. And as we see, he is on Mastodon. You see this first one here just says at Lunduk? That's because he's on the same instance as me. If he was on a different instance, it'll show up like the second one. The same at Lunduk at Librem1. And as you see, it looks like he's also on a Peertube instance, which is why this one's here. So if I click on that, I can see his Peertube posts. Sometimes you can find a bot which will post posts from Twitter. So I think Manjaro has a bot. So here we can see tweets from Manjaro Linux and we can make them show up in our Mastodon feed. There are many um, apps for mobile you can use as well. I use one called FidiLab, which you can find on Google Play and FDroid, and that one's pretty cool. Mastodon also provides a way to back up your account and migrate it to a new instance. So if the rules change or the admins are doing something you don't like, you can simply export your account, delete it on that instance, and import it into your new instance. Okay, so I think here is a good place to wrap things up and state my final thoughts on the Fediverse. I think the biggest challenge is convincing people to leave the centralized social networks and come over to the Fediverse. That's the most challenging part. I deleted my Facebook about eight years ago and went without social media for quite a while. Um, when Mastodon started to take off, I joined that because I thought, wow, this is great. This is the solution. This is how we take back control of our freedom and privacy. I signed up for Mastodon, even though I did not miss social networking at all. I just signed up because I wanted to support the cause. Now, occasionally, a friend or family member will say, I want to stay in touch with you via Facebook, but I refuse to sign up for it. I refuse. I just give them a list of ways they can stay in contact with me. I tell them, email, phone, Fediverse, Riot, Signal, and usually, you know what, they're perfectly happy to pick one of those. I like the old saying, if everyone jumped off a building, would you do it too? Doing something just because everyone else is doing it is a bad idea. So why sign up for a service run by a corporation that does not respect you, does not respect your freedom, does not respect your privacy, and does unethical practices? This is why I don't sign up for services run by Facebook. I think the Fediverse can also help um, communities that might be discriminated against. They can create their own node or instance and administrate, administrate it themselves and make sure that they don't get harassed, which I think is really cool. 
they don't have to rely on some corporation which can sometimes be slow and ignore them completely. Anyways, I think I'll end the video here and thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.